Hi everyone, today I am going to talk about the song What Shall Be Blessed from Naija. What shall be blessed, shall bless, what shall be moved, be moved, man can do, shall do, or let it all be So this song what is a bit special, blessed, it's a bit different from the others because we wanted to have this uh, second line feel on this, uh, on this song. So we created a small brass band, we invited a few musicians over and we had this studio recording live session. We did a few takes, but everything was recorded like this, uh, all together, vocals included. So it was very exciting and it was also very fun. Uh, I remember for this session we had one trombone, one trumpet, one tenor saxophone, one alto saxophone, of course one sousaphone, and the rhythm section was divided between snare and hi-hat and kick drum. This song we used to play it as a trio, uh, lead vocal, guitar, sousaphone and drum, and we played it a lot, and because this, uh, the bass line sounded so much a New Orleans second line, we decided to, to invite a few friends over to, to, record it, uh, to record it. And I did this arrangement. So I wrote the arrangement myself. I, I wrote the, um, the lines for the saxophone and trumpet. And I don't want to talk too much about arranging stuff because this, uh, this video is about bass line, it's about sousaphone. But of course, if you, if you need any advice about arranging or if you have any question, you can contact me. And generally, the vibe of this session was about having fun. It was, um, I mean, the people we invited to play with, they were all friends, people we used to play together with, with other projects. So it was really about the vibe, not really about, you know, details. Of course, I, I am going to go through details, but because this is a live recording session, it was very important that everyone was having fun. So when I composed the bass line, I wanted to support the lead first. So when the singer uh, sang the, the song, he composed the first time in front of me, before I composed the bass line, before anything, the, the first thing that struck me was the rhythmical pattern of the verse. So you have this... Uh, and you have like half note, half note, and then this tung um, tung tung. So you have tung 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 tung. And it follows a 2-3 clave. And we don't have to use the concept of clave, but just so you know that you can have it in mind and that I, it, it could be possible to think like this. And I, ha I thought I had to follow this rhythm and build my bass line with, uh, in uh, taking this into account. So I play the same rhythm, actually exactly the same rhythm. I just change the root notes. So the, the lead vocal is starting with a C, like C, and I start with a F, F, because it's the root note. It's a F major, the, the chord is a F major, and it's alternating with a B flat major. So I have F, then I have to go to B flat, so second note is intuitive, intuitively A, F, A, B, D, E, F, and then the B, B flat, and you have D and E, which uh, complete the, um, the, 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 the melodic path, and also it supports the harmony, and it also makes sense because you have F, A, B flat, D, they are both major third, and this is how I, um, I thought the, the bass line, so that it could be intuitive. Um, the, the A also has a purpose because if you have C and F on the melody and you have only F on the bass line, then you don't have A, you don't have the, the major third of the chord. And I thought it would be interesting, it would be also useful and functional to bring it on the third beat. And you can hear also that I do a small variation on the, um, on the fifth bar. On the fifth bar of the verse, I don't start with, I don't play F. A, I play A, F, B flat. So, because, yeah, to, to give a, a bit of a change and to just, just a small variation, just a small inversion. 
and it's maybe not what you expect in a reggaeton and it's maybe also a bit classical to start a F major with a A, with a major third on the bass but it's also what I am, it's also my classical background and as far as I know nobody complained in the band so I guess it worked. So on the interlude, just after the chorus, I play the same bass line one octave higher. So there, there are two purposes to that. One, one is to give some variation, to change a bit. The second is also a bit to, because it's also more fun to play on the medium register, you know, when you've always played very, very low on the sousaphon with F, like low F, we're really on the extreme of the low register of a sousaphon with three valves. So it's like, you know, it's a bit of a relief, like, okay, finally I can use less air and I can have more definition in the attack. And this is also always a compromise with the sousaphon, when you play on the low register, you have a lot of bass and that's very nice and everyone is happy, but you have less definition. So from time to time, I like to, to play everything one octave higher, as long as it's not too high, but one octave higher, like in the medium register so that I can, I can tongue the knot properly, I can attack it, I can give definition and, and I can be rhythmically involved. I remember Hafid came with a very clear idea of what he wanted for this session because he, he played it so many times alone on a drum and uh, yeah he had a, a clear precise idea and if you listen to the drum beat and to the different section to what's happening it's very amazing it's very it's very smart and it's working, it's, it's, uh, it's really mind-blowing how, how it fits to the lead vocal. I don't want to go into details with that because I'm not a drum player, but for, for a bass player, it was very fun to play with this, with this beat. So melodically, the, um, the bass line of the, of the verse is, uh, is going upward. And I did this because for me, this song is, uh, is a song of, of hope. It's a, it's a message of hope, so it had to go a bit upward. Like it's always going upward if you if you think of, of it. Huh? F A B flat, it's going upward, and the second part is like D E F, also going upward. So it's like a you know a eternal stairs going upward, and uh, that I I could have done I don't know something that that goes downward. You know it could have been like F T B flat. G, F, T, B flat, and then it goes downward all the way. But it's a, it's a different energy, it's a different vibe. So melodically, it was important for me to, to go upward. And uh, you can hear also that on the chorus, the, har uh, the, the um, I'm more functional, I'm just supporting, supporting the, the harmony, I'm just playing root notes, and uh, yeah, I'm just less present. The bass line of the chorus is not something you can remember, it's not something you can sing in opposition to the verse. And uh, yeah, I had to mention also that the, the bass line of the verse is very similar to the one from the version of Ray Charles. Hallelujah, I just love her so. The chorus was originally B flat F, B flat F, B flat F all the way, and maybe there was a C7 somewhere. And then we worked on the harmony with uh, with the lead singer, and uh, we came out with this uh, chord progression that was a bit more interesting. So you can see that we we kept this B flats, but then we alternate, and we do some diatonic substitution. So we have B flat F, B flat D minor which is kind of a deceptive cadenza. 
and then we have a B flat, A minor, G minor, and C7. So I really like this harmonical prog harmony progression because as a bass player it's more fun to play on a, on a whole on eight bars where everything is changing. It's not B flat F, B flat F. You have something happening. You have like kind of a story, you know, it's kind of narrative because you're going somewhere. <laughs> So on the outro, you can hear that everything is a bit different, the tempo is much faster, the lines are different, and it's more like a jam. We were just um, we wanted to have a, a party at the end of the song. We wanted to let it go, and this is what is more or less happening. Um, I didn't arrange anything for this, I just wrote one line for the brass, but the rest is just, it's just jamming, it's just improvised. And everything is directly inspired from I Feel Like Funkin' It Up, which was a song that we used to play also together with the other musicians for some street events. And at the end of the recording, I remember that everyone was very happy because the session went so well. And I remember someone said, yeah, we should do this every week. And everyone was like, yeah, let's do that. And of course it never happened again. So thanks for watching this video. It was about the tune What Shall Be Blessed from Nija. And of course you can find the, you can find the song on SoundCloud, on YouTube, it's for free, so just enjoy it. And if you have any question about uh, baseline writing, you can, uh, of course, you can contact me or write something in the comments. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.